Of course, some think what we have is unfair. The time difference between zones. I've heard that. But isn't this just the next logical step in our evolution? And hasn't evolution always been unfair? It's always been survival of the fittest. And then finally, I think that from uh, you know the last year, the one thing I've tried to put a priority on since I left the White House was you know getting some exercise in. I think that there's a, a good probability that my generation is hopefully with the advances in science either you know the the, the first generation to live forever or the last generation that's going to die. And so uh, we need to keep ourselves in, in pretty good shape. You say that the, the latest human quest is immortality and divinity. We're all trying to be superhumans. Is, is that actually happening? Yes. In places like Silicon Valley, uh, equality is out, but immortality is in. Everybody's talking about immortality. Uh, Google has just established two or three years ago a subcompany called Calico, whose stated aim is to solve the problem of death. And basically they are saying death is not some metaphysical phenomenon. We don't have to wait for the second coming of Christ in order to solve it. Uh, a couple of geeks in the laboratory can do it. Are they doing it? Yeah, they are investing billions in that. Uh, not only them, but all over the world. Basically, there are three ways. You can use biological engineering to change the, the, the human body, to speed up natural selection. You can use cyborg engineering, which is combining organic with inorganic parts. And you can create completely inorganic life forms. Researchers here at the Sinclair Lab within Harvard Medical School tell me this study is the first of its kind to show that epigenetics, which is the way that DNA is organized, can be changed, meaning scientists can now drive and reverse signs of aging. Mm. So we used to always think in the scientific community that aging is a problem with the hardware, with our DNA. And as the DNA replicates, it accumulates junk or accumulates mutations, and there's nothing you can do about that. But what we've now realized based on these studies is that it's actually a software issue Issue, not a hardware issue. So it's the epigenetics. It's not the DNA itself, but the way that it's turned on and off. So the other piece of this is, of course, that they found out that there's actually a, a backup copy, a software reset that's inside all of us. And so if you think about restoring your computer to its factory condition when it's starting to kind of act slow and not do what it's supposed to do, that's essentially what these scientists are doing. They're using that backup copy to sort of say, okay, let's reset your programming. Well, antioxidants have been the biggest disappointment uh, in the aging field. Um, doesn't stop, you know, 40 million people every day buying drinks with antioxidants in them, but antioxidants have, with very few exceptions, failed to extend the lifespan of any organism. Generally, you want to hit it hard and let it recover, hit it hard and let it recover. So what I am planning to do, and actually started doing, is on days that I'm exercising and recovering, I don't take metformin, and then when I'm just sitting around or on a plane, I do. And that way, I think that my body can have the best of both worlds. And then finally, I think that from uh, you know the last year, the one thing I've tried to put a priority on since I left the White House was you know getting some exercise in. I think that there's a, a good probability that my generation is hopefully with the advances in science, either you know the the, the first generation to live forever or the last generation that's going to die. And so uh, we need to keep ourselves in, in pretty good shape. <laughs>